Good morning and many blessings to you all on this feast of St. Mark. And thanks to all of the ministers of our service this morning, um, to Dr. James Pruden, who is serving as our preacher this morning, to George, our director of music, to Kim as our cantor, to Eileen as our lector, to Yana reading on behalf of the congregation, to Richard as our verger, and to Ann for all of our videography at St. Mark's and to Christian for his beautiful presentation this morning. So thank you all. And just a few announcements. Um, <clears throat> the, our annual meeting for 2020 will be concluding the service. Um, and then later today at three o'clock, um, the Exploring Racism and White Privilege Group will be presenting Code Talkers. And that information and link, link can be found in our e-news. And the book group continues on Saturday mornings at 9 with the reading of Holy Envy by Barbara Brown Taylor. All of this can be found in the e-news. And now let us prepare ourselves and heart and mind to be present to the holy in our midst. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth God's praise, to hear God's holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God, let us sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise. And your glory all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. First lesson is a reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down for his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. 
all who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I laid down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may we ever pray with the knowledge that it is in your hands, and may we ever behave with the understanding that it is in our hands. I want to thank Joan for giving me the opportunity to share with you this morning. I say thank, but in reality, she twisted my arm. You know, in the gentle way that Joan twists your arm, and it was gentle, but it's still sore. Um, you see, I had a few moments of reverie and some images came to my mind. I shared them with her and she said I should share them with you and I will. But before we get into that reverie mode, I want to give you a little background. Some of you may not know it, but my father was uh, a minister, a chaplain in the army. And what I came to learn about sermons was that you have to try to match the sermon to the readings. That is what you have to do if you are clergy, but I'm not clergy, so there, <laughs> seriously. Seriously, the reading from John this morning not only makes it simple for me to match the lesson to the product of my reverie, but it seems almost meant for it. Thank you again, Joe. John 316, you've seen it, you've seen it, you've been to sporting events, you've seen them on TV, the Super Bowl, basketball game, some guy in the sign, in the crowd, holds up a sign that says John 316. John, John 316, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow, it is about God and God's love. As I recall, when I was about 12 years old, I was visiting my grandmother in Richmond, Virginia, and I got a call from my mother in Chevrolet, Maryland. And she said, James. And when she says James, not Jimmy, I know, okay, trouble. The gist of the call was she wanted me to sign up to get baptized uh, in, in the cycle they had in the Baptist church where I, I grew up. Uh, every four or six months, there would be baptism. And my sister, who was 15 months younger, had already been baptized. And my brother, who was older, had already been baptized, and now she wanted me to get baptized. Well, here I am, the guy who wants to be a doctor, the guy looking for science in all things. Um, and I'm not sure where I am with this. Uh, so, fast forward a couple of weeks, and I'm sitting in the, in the balcony at Shiloh Baptist Church at 9th and P Street Northwest, and I look above the tabernacle, right above the choir loft, and there is a phrase, the three-word phrase, God is love. Wow, God is love. Uh, and it, it struck me. Did I see the words or did the words see me? I began to substitute the word God for places where the word love was, especially in songs. Yeah, that's really scientific, but you know, Love is a many splendor thing. God is a many splendor thing. Love makes the world go round. God makes the world go round. I can feel it. It was not perfect science, but it resonated perfectly with something deep inside of me. I can tell you that my faith has evolved and grown and twisted and turned and sometimes faltered through the many wonders and travails of my life. Uh, I cannot begin to know the entirety of God, but whenever I have paused, 
I can reach out and hold on to a primitive, unchanging truth. God is love. So, about this reverie, I know I said, I know if I said the word meditation, some of you would say, yeah, I should try that. And some of you would say, ah, oh, yes. Some of you would have a conniption. And there are some of you, probably one or two of you, that would actually have a seizure. So if you feel a seizure coming on, just turn off the cameras, okay? Just turn off the cameras. Uh, but I'm gonna use a different strategy. It's called guided imagery. That is where I get to tell you what to think about so you don't have to think about what it is you're not going to think about, okay? Um, but please, bear with me. Um, for the next five minutes, there is no place else you have to be. There is nothing you have to do. There is nobody that needs you, except we need you to be here to share your energy with us. So, get into a comfortable position. Sitting up, back straight, eyes closed. Breathe in through your nose and out slowly. That's good. Take another deep breath. As you breathe, let your eyes, your eyebrows, and your forehead relax. Breathe. Let the corners of your mouth relax. Breathe. Breathe. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your legs. Just breathe. Be at peace. Now I want you to imagine that you're standing in front of mirrors. You know, the kind you would see in the dressing room of a clothing store, three mirrors, where you could look into the reflection, the reflection of yourself and the reflection of the mirror and yourself and the mirror into infinity. Breathe. Now imagine that they are not just three mirrors, but mirrors all around you. And you're standing in the center. Breathe. Breathe. Imagine that there are mirrors below you and above you. Breathe. Imagine that it's not your body in the center but a light, your light, your soul. Bathe in the warmth. Bathe in that light. Your 
your soul, your essence, beyond the flesh, your soul. Beyond the blood, your soul. Beyond the pain, beyond the effort, your soul. You are endowed with that essence, that light, that force. If what Jesus taught us is true, if what God showed us by allowing Jesus to die on that cross for us, for our souls, for that which he has given us, and that which he asks us to return to him, then perhaps we can call it love. And that love that is generating warmth and light is seeking to spread infinitely beyond the windows of your mirrors. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This is the better man. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hear our cry, O God. And listen to our prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered his people from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings he showers upon us, for our lives and those we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us, for our families and our friendships. Let us give thanks to the God of life, risen Lord. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive works of God for our clergy, Joan and Jim, our bishop, Carly and our presiding Bishop Michael. We pray for Pastor Kim and the Jesus Dreams congregation, for the many lay people who serve the church, especially our wardens, vestry, group leaders and staff, for those gathered on Zoom in worship and prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our confirmants, Alex, Ava, Carter, and Sophia, that the joy of Easter may ever grow within them and that the spirit may guide them in lives of active faith. Risen Lord. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and people of the world that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline. We pray that justice, peace, and prosperity may be lifted up and that our leaders, most especially Joe, Kamala, Phil, and Sheila, will follow that path. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, me. Let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, or those who struggle, especially everyone on St. Mark's prayer list and prayer chain. We ask the hope of Easter to give them peace and renewal and that through their struggles, they may come into closer communion with the God that redeems and restores. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for those in our community celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, especially Casey, Joseph, Delaney, Sarah, Juanita, John, Daniel, Eric, and Ellen. Hear our prayer. For those who rest in the peace of Christ and for all the departed, especially Susan, Jean, Trish, and Inez, as well as Bishop Charles Jenkins, Peyton Ham, and Dante Wright, Matthew Alexander, Samaria Blackwell, Amarjeet Johal, Jaswinder Carr, Jaswinder Singh, Amarjeet Sikone, Carly Smith, John Weissert, Brandon Hole, Makia Bryan, and Andrew Brown. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, 
We are grateful for grace-filled learning. As a church, we understand we are more than our beloved sacred spaces. As global citizens, we see that our actions have a profound effect on each other, on animal and plant life and on the environment. As neighbors, we are increasing in kindness towards each other. As individuals, we have been given relief from busy schedules and invited to journey inward. As Christians, we can hear the call to be your hands, your feet, your voice in the world. And so we pray. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, for you give us eternal peace through Jesus Christ. Hear our prayers, which we offer in the hope of glory, and breathe upon us with your Holy Spirit. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies <coughs> that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.